Hey there, guys, and welcome back to my channel, Gusty's Plants. So, March books have dropped on Book of the Month. I believe we got six different books to look through and see which one we want to make our Book of the Month. And um, without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. But before I do them, Lisa Jewel, none of this is true, was my favorite book um, last year. And it was a finalist on uh, Book of the Year. However, it did not win. It was Abby Jimenez, yours truly, a lovely Book of the Year. So congratulations to Abby Jimenez, amazing job. I, however, loved None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. This was an amazing story, super thrilling and like mysterious. And I absolutely loved it. If you have not read that book, I highly recommend you guys to pick that book up. Lisa Jewell, None of This is True was an amazing book and I absolutely loved it. So congratulations, Abby Jimenez, though, for being the champion and being the winner with your book. Was I didn't read it, but um, I'm pretty sure it was an amazing book. Anyways, so let's go ahead and get started with um, book of the month picks for um, for February. I'll be using my phone here, and um, let's just go ahead and get started with the books. So let's see, March books. So I'll be using my phone here to get everything quick and started. So. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started with March books. So current books, let's see, let's see, let's see. So we have a Fate Inked in Blood. This is a fantasy. Um, I read that book before. I have a review. I have a review on it on my channel. Um, I got it from Fairy Loot, their exclusive edition with the redesigned cover and end pages and uh, the foiling and the stencil spread edges. It was a nice book. I gave it a three out of five. If you guys want to know more about the story of uh, Look at my video, I'll leave it on the description box. But, um, a 3 out of 5 for me. Not my favorite. So yeah, A Fate Inked in Blood. Um, it's a Norse mythology book, and it really just talks about the shielded maiden. Uh, she's a goddess, she was gifted by the shield, um, and now everybody wants her. She's kind of like the bounty hunter, and so... It's just a little repeating for me, like, it, the story doesn't really develop, it's just kind of like stagnant. But anyways. The next one we have is Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera. This is a thriller. Um, so yeah, I haven't re heard about this book. So let's see. It says, keep your ears and eyes open. Someone in this small Texas town is telling a story that just doesn't quite add up. Let's look through book uh, Goodreads and see the star rating and everything here. So Listen for the Lie has a 4.4 .4 star rating uh, with a thousand 200 reviews or a little bit over a thousand two hundred reviews um mystery thriller mystery thriller fiction suspense adult okay um it will be releasing on march 5th so it's kind of right around the corner um not the best i'm trying to read what the book is about here it is okay so after lucy is found wandering the streets covered in her best friend's savvy blood Everyone thinks that she is a murderer. Lucy and Savvy were the golden girls of their small Texas town and pretty smart and enviable. And enviable? Lucy is married a dream guy with a big ring and an even a bigger new home. Savvy was a social butterfly loved by all and if you believe the rumors, especially the popular with the man in town, it's been years since the horrible night and uh, Lucy can't remember anything about. And she has since moved to LA and started a new life. It does not really grab my attention. Um, I don't want to be reading thrillers right now for March. So this is going to be a skip for me. I'm not going to be picking this book as my book of the month. So Anibot. This is a literary fiction. And this is a robot's girlfriend tumultuous coming of age. It's a gut-wrenching examination of modern romance, agency, and humanity. Hmm. This looks kind of unique. Let's see. It's an emotional, feminist, salacious, and tech world. Okay, let's look at, let's see, let's look at um, Goodreads so we can see a little more about the book here. Anibot has a 4.06 star rating with uh, just about 200 reviews. So it says, Anibot was created to be the perfect girlfriend for, the, for her human owner, Doug. Designed to satisfy his emotional and physical needs, she has a dinner ready for him every night, wears the perfect outfits he orders for her, and he and adjusts her libido to self his moods to suit his moods. Oh my God. Um, true, she's not the greatest at keeping Doug's place spotless, but she's trying to please him. She's trying hard. 
it kind of sounds like an anime. I forgot the name of that anime, but I'll leave a picture here. Um, I don't know about this. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It sounds unique. It sounds interesting. So far, it's my favorite from the three. Um, but I don't know if I'll make this my book of the month pick. Uh, I don't know. It sounds okay. It sounds okay. Let's go back to the book of the month here. And we have... So, let's see. The next one we have here is Anita de Monte. Laughs Last. I've, um... I heard this book about... I've heard this book on Goodreads. And I've heard, um... Don't talk about it. So... It's, um, it says, From campus to galleries, this engrossing tale of two female artists paints a complex portrait of power and privilege. 80s, social issues, non-linear timeline, and it is set in New York City. So let's look for, um, the Goodreads reviews. So this is at a 4 star rating with um, 4.44 stars and it has just about 100 reviews, 143 reviews. So let's see. It says, in 1985, Anita de Monte, a rising star in the art world, is found dead in New York City. Her tragic death is, stock, is the talk of the town until it isn't by 1998. Anita's name has been all but forgotten. Certainly by the time Raquel, a third year art student, um, is preparing for her final thesis on College Hill, surrounded by privileged students whose futures are already paved out for them, Raquel feels like an outsider student of color. Like her are like her are the minority there. And the pressure to work twice as hard for the same opportunities is no secret. But when Raquel becomes romantically involved with a well-connected older art student, she finds herself unexpectedly rising up to the social ranks. As she attempts to straddle both worlds, she stumbles upon Anita's story, raising questions about the dynamics of her own relationship, which eerily mirrors that of the forgotten artist. Moving back and forth through time and told from the perspectives of both women, Anita de Monte Laughs Last is a person a propulsive ready examination of power, love, and art, daring to ask who gets to be remembered and who is left behind in the rough in the rarefied field world of the elite. Okay. That sounds like very complex, like um I don't know. It sounds very interesting, I must say. The fact that it has like a Latino heritage name and everything kind of makes me want to pick it as my book of the month. And I don't know if I want to read it. It's kind of like a mystery thriller as well, if you think about it. Um, who killed who and um, the secrets lay upon her death. And it sounds very interesting and intriguing. Um, but yeah, so far, that's a really good one, along with Annie Bot. Okay. So yeah, let's look to the next one over here. So yeah, let's look to the next one over here. The last one we have here in this book of the month. It's a uh, kill for me, kill for you. No, I believe this is second to last. Sorry, kill for me, kill for you. This is the woman out for revenge. Hatch a plot to help each other, but in the Big Apple, the best laid plans can easily go awry. Now I'm noticing that a lot of these books are set up in New York City, so I've never been to New York. Let's but, look um, at the Goodreads here. Let's see what they have to say in store for us. So right now they have it sitting at a 4.3 star rating with um short out of a thousand reviews with 800 reviews um let's see one dark evening on new york city upper west side two strangers meet by a chance over drinks amanda and wendy realize that they have much in common especially loneliness and an intense for desire for revenge against the men who destroy their families as they talk into the night they come up with the perfect yeah, guys, not sure about this one. There's another thriller here again. Um, I don't know why Book of the Month just gives us the same genre pretty much all over again. Thrill after thrill. I'm not interested in this book at all. Um, I don't know. It's just, it sounds like something that I've read before. But that's, um, let's just go back to Book of the Month here. Let's see. And the last book here on Book of the Month. Let's just go back to Book of the Month. Let's see. The last book we have here, it's a memoir. It says, it's Hereafter by Amy Lynn. It's, yeah, it's a memoir. So this is, uh, grief has its own grammar. This poetic visceral exploration of the sudden loss of a spouse will rewire your heart. I'm not really interested in reading memoirs. They're not for me, unfortunately. So it says, quick take. 
Um, grief has its own grammar. These poetic visor. Okay, let's see. It's an emotional, sad, non-linear timeline. It's literally. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna look further into it just because I don't. I'm not really interested. Just for the sake of it, let's see how many um, stars it has on. Good. Uh, Four point six stars. Wow, I think it's the highest rating. However, it only has thirty-four reviews. Go figure. Um, let's see. Uh, hereafter, it's an intimate story of deep love followed by dizzying loss. A stunning thought memoir from the debut author Amy Lynn, so finely etched and powerful that it will alter readers' hearts. When he dies, I fell out of time. Amy Lynn never expected to find love like the one she shares with her husband, Curtis, a gifted young architect who pulls her towards joy, adventure, and greater self-acceptance. But on a sweltering August morning, only a few months shy of the newlyweds move to Vancouver, 32-year-old Curtis heads out to run a half marathon with Amy's family in the last time that she sees her husband alive. Ten days after this seismic loss, Amy is the hospital navigating her own shocking medical crisis and making life or death decisions about her treatment. What follows is a rich and unflinchingly honest accounting of her life with Curtis the vortex created by his death, and the ongoing struggle Amy faces as she attempts to understand her own experience in the context of commonly held truths about what is the grieving process looks like and hereafter is a love story, a meditation of the ways in which Curtis' death shatters by any set ideas Amy's on grief. Strength and memoir and memory, its power will last with you long after the final page. It sounds like another sad story yet again here. Um, I think I might skip this month or I may make Annie Bot my book of the month. I'm not sure I need to think about it. Um, or I probably could get some of your help in the comments down below. Well, comment down below what is your book of the month and maybe I could, you know, guide myself based on the comments what book I'm going to pick. But so far, I'm not really interested in any of these books. Um, so I'm not even going to look at the at the side books because why but um anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope you guys found this video helpful um so yeah till i see you guys next time